if that's your testimony, sing with us. To, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Everybody say, Hallelujah. To worship you, I live. To worship you.
I ain't gonna fix that too. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord today. Amen. Amen. We're gonna have testimonies, a few testimonies from the from the Lord. Amen. The glory of God. Amen. I said we're gonna reverse it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Everybody can hear me now. Praise be to God. Somebody tell me, I'm going to pass the mic. They got some volume to it, please. Next time, being uh, uh, his voice is not as strong as the younger people. But we praise the Lord. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands and tell him thank you? I didn't hear you. Say it again. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh. I just want to thank you, Lord. Can you say that? Tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. With all my heart, I tell you. Not meant for you. I wouldn't be here today. Thank you. You. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I like this kind of song. Thank you, thank you, my holy, thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
and not about him. Ah, God Almighty. Ah, God Almighty. You've got to make that announcement. I pray right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, every kind of and everyone that's desiring to own a brand new, good smelling vehicle. Hey, God. And we will put the house in there too. God Almighty. And put the house in there too. Praise be to God. I only have one. I'm going to have another one. Because he said, How's this? So I say, How's this? He said, how's this? So I say, come on, dog. Y'all stop sitting in the back. So I say, how's it? Dude, are y'all getting in the van? Are you, are you, move, move to the front, dog. Don't, don't ever sit back there. Praise God. Come back there. Pass up and say, come out by the heat. Praise God. I think that you realize we've been missing because we just said that the Lord said it. But he said, you must say it. You've got to say it yourself. You've got to proclaim. Well, let me let me help you if I can. Praise be to God. What do they say? Praise be to God. Amen. If you confess that, that you believe he died, praise be to God. And God rose him on the third day. If you confess him, amen. And anybody in your life, you were saved. And then you have to do that first of all. You've got to say it. You've got to say you're a millionaire. Amen. My good brother on the on the altar, he hit it one time, and then I ain't heard him say it no more. But you got to say it. You got to say it. You must say it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I don't mind the folk out there hearing this. You heard me say many times, I want to walk in that anointing amen of Elijah. And I said, Elijah did never say when he said it was not going to rain for the space of three years and so forth and so forth. Don't y'all let the hand go. Pray, hold the hand. Something might happen. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all see? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going I'm, I'm to try to get back to what I wanted to do. What I planned to do. I was saying, listen, I kept saying, he said, whatever he said, it happened right then. And I was trying to get into that anointing. Walk in that anointing. It is an anointing, you know, that destroys the yoke. Come over here. And the Lord dealt with my heart. Elijah said, uh, Elijah said, according to the God of Israel, mm -hmm. whom I stand before, yes. whom I serve, according to my word, And I was trying to get that. He didn't say, the Lord said to say that. He said, according to my word, there will be no rain. Praise God. Not just in New Jersey, all over the universe. God Almighty. I said, all over the universe, he said, there will be no rain for the space of three years. Bishop is a preacher, so I got to get out of the way. Listen, listen. So I want you to get this. He said, according to to my word. And God spoke to me. He said, did I not say in my word, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you can ask whatever you will of me, yes. and I will do it. So Elijah requested no rain. I saw Elijah's request was there would be no rain. One man one man. He was in the word. How many times did you hear me walk up and down and say, the Lord told me, if I obey his word, he will honor my words. You want God to honor your words? You've got to obey his word. Yes. Then you qualify. Thank you, Jesus. Say qualify. Qualify. Say I qualify. I qualify. For no mortgage. For no mortgage. And no car note. And no car note. And whatever else I may want. Because there's a, there's a promise in his word. In his word. And he told me and he, told he would me. give me, he would give me the, desire the desire of my heart. Of my heart. I, found out I found out he puts the desires, he puts the desires in, my in my heart. It is God, it is God. who gives it. <laughs> yeah. Don't you know that desire you got? You didn't just dream it up. God dressed it in your spirit. God puts it in your heart. Are you listening?
listen to me. It ain't something you decided. Amen. It was a dream that God put in you. Every one of us, he put a dream in us. A desire in us. God said, I'll let go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's receive that. One, one quick. Go ahead, baby. Another testimony. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Testimony. Testify. Recently, I had took the PSATs, and they sent the scores out, but I can't log into the account. And my teacher had sent out a scholarship to do. And next day, my mom was like, come downstairs, I'm down for you. And it's like, it was like a college for them to come visit for me. So I had to visit them. And then two days later, the college board that I took the PSATs, they're offering me a scholarship up to four. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank out of the way. It's yours. I said it's yours. Somebody give God some praise. Thank you, Jesus. That's what you need a scholarship. Praise be to God. Amen. All right. Testimony for the Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. You got to tell your car you pay it off. You got to tell you. You got to tell that that house. See, first of all, amen, you know, you, you, you got to, amen, get, see the house. That's Praise it. God. That's it. You got to see it. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise be to God. All right? And when you want to see it, you got to say, my house. That's it. Now, I, I can go back, amen, to over there, amen, in, uh, in Teaneck where we live, amen. Lena said, that's my house. Mm -hmm. And her sister, Dora, looked at a house up the street, Dora said, that's my house. Yeah. Somebody else had own, had the ownership, but they turned out just that. That's it. You don't know the power that you release when you speak words. Amen. Amen. You don't realize the power that you re whether whether it's good or whether it's bad. All right. So you don't want to release nothing bad. You want to be filled with God's righteousness that you release good. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. be to God. Anyway, another testimony for the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Lord. Give, give, give the Lord mic. I got it. Praise be to God. That's all right. I like this guy. I like refuse. <laughs> Go ahead, Susanna. I just want to give honor to God who's ahead of my life who also brought me to and from and back home to my destination. Um, as many of you guys know, I went on vacation. I just got back a few hours ago. And when I tell you it was such a beautiful thing, I prayed the whole trip. Because I went to the Dominican Republic, absolutely gorgeous, not the safest place, but I played the whole trip. And <laughs> and um, some of you guys know I'm absolutely terrified of water. I cannot swim. The last time I went to the ocean, I was 19, almost drowned, came back and got prayed over because I almost died. It was terrible. But I went into the ocean on a boat, and I prayed so hard on the boat. And I tell you, it was rocking. We were going to, like, tip over, and I'm just like... I started praying and thinking about Jesus walking on the water. I'm like, I am a child of the Lord. I believe in God. This boat is not capsized and we're going to be calm. And I tell you, the water got so calm. It was insane. <laughs> we were fine because literally we, a few of us, I have scrapes on my knees because I fell. Um, but I just want to say, I say that all to say that it was so beautiful to have such peace in the Lord on the trip, even though the place itself was not safe when we ventured out, that he kept me so many so many different things could have happened while we were out there, but me being prayed up and pretty sure there were people that prayed for me when I was when I was out there. But that beautiful feeling that you have in the Lord, like you can overcome your fears and like it actually gave me the desire and the ability to go take care of other things that I'm gonna be taking care of because you should not have any fear in the Lord. That's right. So I'm just thankful that I was able to go there and back and made it back alive and safe, not harmed, healthy and just completely was able to overcome some fears because of my faith in God. So I just absolutely love that. 
God bless you. Number, number one, for the call ready, you can start to testify. Everyone, everyone else who wants to testify, stand up on your feet right about now. I give honor to the Lord today. I thank him for saving me. I thank him for, for my healing. Everybody know, most of everybody know that when my knees used to hurt me so bad, and I went to the doctor, and the doctor said that I don't have no cultures between the bones. And and it was so painful. I just said I had to just keep on popping pills, popping pills, popping pills. And I thank God healed my legs. I had didn't have no surgery. Yes, Lord. And yes, Lord. it's healed. I don't have no problem with my legs. Amen. I don't have no problem at all. And I thank God. And also I thank God for my vehicle. I didn't have the mind. We went into the showroom and I I didn't have no mind of thinking about, you know, the car. But we saw the two blue cars sitting there together. I said, oh, I like that car there. Because I hated my CRV. <laughs> I hated it. It wasn't going fast enough for me. So I, I give God honor and I give him praise. I thank him for touching my eyes. Oh, yes. I'm glad he touched my eyes. My eyes used to act. They're all over the place, and I couldn't see to drive. But I thank them. They're much better than they was. And I give them glory for everything that he has done for me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And she didn't tell y'all, and we didn't have no money. <laughs> amen. Bishop, and I told him, I said, I'm a millionaire. Amen. He said you must go to buy 10 cars. I said, no, just two. And I, I don't know, the words was just, God was just speaking. So let me say this, and then we're going to turn it over to Bishop. Praise be to God. Let me say this. I want to help some of y'all that's still sitting down. It is written, they overcome. Say it again. Overcome. How they overcome? By their testimony. By the word. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. So you can sit down as long as you like. But they overcome. You want to be an overcomer? You want to get there? You got to testify. Faith is a set of things hoped for. Yes. The evidence of things not seen. You speak it. And then the heavenly realm releases it. But you got to open your mouth and speak it. Get your move-in date, daughter. Y'all, you find her? That house you like? That that one? You sure that's the one? You gonna be happy? I thought you say you sure. Yes, we sure. We found one. You found it. We're getting it. We can't get that. You found it. They said it's manufactured. They don't like. Give me my mic, I want to hear. I want to hear this about this house. Because I, I have a, I, I, I want to say this real quickly. Praise be to God. Amen. 
Praise God. Amen. And Sister Spelman can verify this. We were looking for a house in the South. Praise God. And we found the house that we wanted. But the people that was going to sell it wouldn't sell it to us because they weren't our agent. And I asked Sister Spelman, I said, you want that house? She said, yeah. I said, all right. I said, all right. So we prayed. I'm going to tell you how far it went. How far did it go, Sister Spelman? It went to the president, the owner of the whole firm, Esther. And he's, I don't know where he's at, but he called me long distance, all the way back to Tia. He said, Mr. Spellman, do you want that house? I said, yes, I do. He says, it's yours. We change the very law that they had. God will change stuff just for you. But all you got to do is come clean and get serious. Yeah. Praise be to God. Stop talking out both sides of your mouth. <laughs> Talk straight. Amen. You find out. Bishop, Amen. I'm going to cut it off that Sunday morning, Sister, uh, Sister Evangelist Page. We want to give about half an hour, 20 minutes, in the devotion for testimony. Amen, Bishop. I guess y'all have to sing and work it back up. I done, I done dropped it down a notch or two. Praise be to God. So give him Give Bishop a real hot song. Can I testify real quick? Oh, <laughs> Praise God. I just want to testify. And, um, first, I want to give all honor to my Lord Jesus Christ, who's head of my life. I give honor to the angel of this house, to Bishop Towns, to all the ministers and evangelists in their respective place, and my brothers and sisters in Christ. I just want to thank God. It's been a year since I walked into my home. And I thank God, because I did not know where I was going to go. I did not know where I was going to move to. I had the Lord show me boxes, and I packed my boxes. But it was such a struggle. And, and Pastor knows I called him so many times just crying, like, where I'm going to go, where I'm going to go. But I thank God I found my home, my first home. Let me make that not my first home. Uh -oh. And I just thank God for all the blessings he has bestowed. And the enemy is trying to rattle my fence, you would say, but he can't rattle my fence because what God bless, no man can take. And I give him all the glory, and I truly give him all the honor. Y'all pray for me as I pray for you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all saying something to Bishop. But did y'all hear what the lady said? How many heard what she said? What did she say about it? Did, it, did anybody get what I got? She said, my what home? Second home. Uh, yeah, baby. Uh, first. Uh, first home. Sound like me. She's expecting another home. Yes, what I am. Y'all here? Yes. She said, let me, let me say that. My first home. Yes. Yes. Y'all catch up All right, daughter. Let's Bishop Towns. 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 Bishop He's been he's been on vacation for about like two months now, so I know. Praise be to God. <laughs> he's ready to come before you. God bless you. Give us a short, fired up song. If it ain't fired up, don't sing it. Praise be to God. All right. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, praise him. Y'all gonna y'all y'all gonna y'all y'all gonna jump in there? I just
those hands together, give God a praise. Come on, put those hands together, give God a praise. If you don't believe he's brought you this far to leave you, you need to praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give honor to the Spirit of the Lord. And we praise God for being in the house. We honor our pastor. Amen. Chris, do you have a game today? Come here, son. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand with me real quick. I'm going to cover him and it's the last thing I do. Stretch your hand towards me. My God said, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, as he prepares to go on that court today, we ask, God, that don't you only cover him, but cover the entire team. In the name of Jesus, let this be a day of victory. In Jesus' name, let there be no injuries, no falls, no hurts. In the name of Jesus, let that ball go where it needs to go, through the net. God, we give you the glory. And we, hey, Shatou. And we give it the honor in Jesus' name. We call it so. Amen. Amen. Play with us. I'll be there. Amen. We thank God for being in the house. Sister Carter, get me Matthew chapter 1 real quick. Y'all just give me 15 minutes. If the Lord say the same. Okay. Amen. Amen. It's not going to be a typical Christmas message, but we're going to talk from Matthew chapter 1 just real quick. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Amen. Now, before, but before you read, just before you read, we want to talk from the thought just a little while this morning, the birth of a miracle. Amen. Some of y'all need a miracle. Yeah. If y'all don't, I do. Amen. Some of y'all need a miracle. Yes. I passed this house not too long ago. In Paramus, we were coming up. I don't know, I think that's Paramus Road. I think that's what it is. I'm not sure. But I think it's Paramus. No, it's Midland Ave. And the first time I passed the house, there was no for sale sign on it. I passed the house a couple of weeks ago, and there's a sale sign on it. All right now, claim I said, now, Lord, what's this, this all about? Because, see, I can't, I, 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 I've, I've come to the conclusion, and I know I can't go nowhere when, as I plan to go. Because when I retired, I planned to get, go, get out of New Jersey. But a little man done changed my mind. Amen. So I gotta hang around a while. At least till he's 17, 18 years old. And I passed that house, I said, okay, God, what, what, what is this all about? Now I, I, I done put the car before you. You told me what to do, and I ain't done it yet because I ain't got slow. And Pastor, I was in the car with, with Sister Margot last Saturday, and we were coming up up 46. We passed Brogan. I didn't even realize I passed Brogan. And she said to me, you should have you should have stopped at the Cadillac dealer. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, sis, I know. But I'm looking for a miracle. I'm looking for a miracle. The birth of a miracle. Begin at chapter 1, verse 18. Read if you will. Now the birth of Jesus Christ uh -huh. was on this wide. Yes. When as his mother Mary mm -hmm. was espoused to Joseph, uh -huh. before they came together, she was... Wait a minute. It says, before they came together. Before they came together. Y'all mm -hmm. didn't hear it. You mm -hmm. missed it, didn't you? Before they came together, a miracle took place. What read? She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Before they came together. 
Y'all know the story. She got pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Joseph got embarrassed. He got scared because of the laws of the land and going to put her away. But the miracle about it was she was pregnant with a child without the natural way of doing it. What's a miracle? Y'all give me five more minutes. What's a miracle? A miracle is a surprising and welcome event that doesn't make sense to scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of God. It's something that just the mind can't wrap itself around. My wife sitting over there is a miracle. When the doctor said it wasn't going to be so, when the doctor gave up on her, when the doctor gave her, gave her up to die, when the doctor declared her brain dead four times and she's talking to me on the fourth time, that was a miracle. Yes, yes. Something that science said wouldn't happen. Right. Some of y'all sitting here need a miracle. Mm. Y'all need something to happen that, that's just unreal to science. Unreal to man. That should not have even taken place. You should not even have gotten that house. There's no way you could afford that piece of land. It's a miracle. Mary birthed a miracle. I ain't done with the text yet. Mary birthed a miracle. The Bible says that that which was born in her was of the Holy Ghost. But in order for you to birth a miracle, yes. you've got to not only receive it, but first of all, you got to live holy. Yes, sir. Yes. I, I feel my apostolic roots. In order to birth a miracle, you've got to live holy. Yes. Yes. For the Bible declared, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's right. My message hasn't changed. What is holiness, Bishop? It's a clean way of living. That's it. It's a clean lifestyle. That's it. Yeah, we'll slip. Yes, we will fall. Yes, we'll have shortcomings. Because all our righteousness is like filthy rags before him anyhow. But even though we fall, even though we slip, even though we have shortcomings, don't stay down Get there. Up. Donnie McClurkin said, I fell down, but I got up. Yes, he did. Yes. So in order to get a miracle, the first thing you have to do is to be living a holy life. Not only a holy life, but a sanctified life. What's a sanctified life, Bishop? It's a set-aside life. A life that's been set aside and dedicated to the life of God. Folk want miracles, but they don't want to do what it takes to get it. Yes. Folk looking for miracles and claiming this and claiming that. And I'm believing in God for this. And their life was tore up from the floor. Up. But yet I'm believing God. Got news for you. God ain't nowhere around you. The Bible says he reigns on the just. You got to the holy to get the miracle. So you need a miracle. The first thing, see, Mary, catch this. Mary was a virgin. She was never touched. She was a clean vessel. And if you read the scriptures closely, even in the Old Testament, when it came time to make sacrifices, the, the God said, bring me an unblemished lamb. Is that? Go ahead, Jay. Bring me an unblemished lamb. Yes. Bring me a sacrifice that's never been touched. Bring me a sacrifice that's never been touched by human hand. I need something that's clean. That's right. So if you want a miracle, the first thing you got to do is to live holy. Yeah. If you say you say your next step is to live a holy life. Yeah. Live a sanctified life. Because a miracle is an extraordinary and astonishing happening that is attributed to the presence of God and the actions of God. God 
will give you a miracle. The Clark sisters wrote a song and said, I'm looking for a miracle. I believe the impossible. I feel the intangible. Are you looking for it? Jesus says, seek it, you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. Ask, and it shall be given. The problem is we're not seeking, knocking, or asking. We, we know what we're looking at? We're looking at what's in our pocket. I don't have it. We're looking at what's in our bank account. It ain't there. We're looking at what we have on hand and our resources. It's not, I don't have enough. We're looking at what, 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 what the banker is telling us. Our credit rate is not that good. Yes. But I'm looking at a miracle. I'm looking for God to do a miracle. Yes. I believe in God to turn it around. When they said I couldn't have it. Pastor touched on it a little bit. I thought he was going to go ahead and just go ahead and preach. I'm, I'm believing God to do something when, when I don't see it happening. That's right. It's a miracle. Amen. A miracle is something that takes place out of the ordinary that only God can do. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood, she got a miracle. Yes, sir. The man at the gate, beautiful, got a miracle. Yeah. They said he wouldn't walk. Paul just looked at him and said, I don't have no silver and gold. I ain't got no money. But I tell you what I do got. I got Jesus. Uh -huh. And that's how we have to speak, saints of God. When we're going through situations, when we're going through problems, we got to look at things and say, well, I, I, I ain't got this, but I ain't got that. But one thing I do have, I got Jesus. Yes. And the God I serve will work for me. Yes. The God I serve will open doors for me. If I dare to trust him, if I dare to believe his word, if I dare to stand on what he said. Because the Bible says he's not a God that should lie. Is that what it says, Evangelist Susan? He's not a God that he should lie. He said, if I said it, I'll bring it to pass. If I said it, I'll do it. The problem is we don't believe it. We believe it for a quick second. Oh, for a few hours on Sunday morning while the preacher is preaching while faith is to the ceiling. But when we walk out the door and we hit the world, do you still believe? Do you still believe? Will you still trust God? Or will you be a doubting Thomas? Will you be a doubting Thomas? Thomas doubted. As long as Thomas didn't look down at his feet and realize he was walking on water and kept his eyes on Jesus, catch it, he was walking. But the moment he realized, oh my God, I'm on water, the Bible says he sunk like a rock. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes on his word. Trust his word. His word will not fail. We sing that Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth will pass away. But Jesus never fails. Will you really trust him? Because he never fails. You looking for a miracle? You believe in God for a miracle? You're trusting God for a miracle? Trust him. Don't let your faith falter. Don't let your faith weaken. Don't let your faith sway, but trust him. Trust him. Trust him. We, 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 and let me help somebody today. We need your simple faith. Hmm? You did it when you walked through the door. Who are you talking about now, Bishop? You did it when you walked through the door. You walked through this door. And you sat your little happy self right on that chair. You trusted the maker and the manufacturer of that chair to hold your weight, whatever it might be. Who told you that chair would hold you? 
Why? Because it's a chair? I've seen some folks sit in the chair and the chair go down. Who told you that chair would hold you? Who told you that chair would hold your 180 pounds? Who told you that chair would hold your 250 pounds? Watch out, man. Who told you that? But yet you trust the manufacturer that when you walk through this door, you just plop yourself down and ain't thought about it twice. Use that same faith to unlock the door in your life. Use that same faith to unlock that door in your life that you need unlocked. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they say. I don't care what the financier says. I know the man that has the own cattle on 10,000 hills. Uh -huh. You can say what you want to say. I know the man that, that holds my credit. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, now, I'm living holy, I'm living sanctified, I'm living all that I know to live. My credit is good in heaven. All right. And I can walk into the storeroom and demand what I want. You got to learn to demand what you want. If you shall ask for anything in my name, you'll have it. We got to learn how to command and demand what is ours. We got to learn to do that, saints of God. Because I'm going to tell y'all, can I, can I let you in on a little secret? There's a famine coming to this nation. Yes, yes. Oh. Food is expensive. Mm -hmm. I've never in my life paid almost $10 for a pack of chicken wings. Chicken. The gospel bird. But yet. We have to learn to believe God. Because it's going to get worse. Because the Bible said it would get worse. The word of, the prophetic word is coming to pass. And we won't even talk about buying some spare ribs or some pork ribs. If they're so expensive. And we paid anyhow. But baby, I'm here to tell you today, you need to learn to believe God. Trust God for your miracle. Trust God to open that door. Trust God to release that in your life. Trust him. And I'm through. Trust him. If you trust him, he'll do it and he'll bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. Trust God. Come on, Rich. Let him have it. Trust in God. You're in the right thing. Trust him. Trust him with your very being, with your very life, with your very, all the fiber in your life. Trust God. Don't trust man, because man will let you down every time. Don't, don't even trust family, because family will turn their back on you. I'm here to tell you. Family will promise you the world. And when it comes time, I'm, I'm, I would have, but you know this came up. You liar, you. You ain't going to do it from the door. Trust God. Trust him. If you, I'm telling you, if you learn to trust him without question, and you learn to release and activate your faith, there's a saying came out, I don't really like it, I, I think it's blasphemy for us, I'm concerned, but there's something that just came out a few months ago, I think it was, Holy Ghost activated. I think that's so blasphemy. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. But if you would activate your faith, mm -hmm. if you would turn the switch to on on your faith, when your back is up against the wall, and you can't turn left, you can't turn right, you can't even turn around because you're up against the wall, and you don't know which way you're going, activate your faith. And watch the door swing open. Watch the door open for you. My wife is a woman of faith. I have never seen so much faith in my life like hers. Where are you on the radar? 
Where are you on the on the on the spiritual uh, 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 temperature gauge? Where are you? Are you are you below zero? Are you up above one hundred and ten? Where are you? Where's your faith? You want a miracle like me? Did I finish that text? No, I didn't. Did I? Did I get down to that last verse? What verse? What verse you stopped at? Eighteen. I started. That was it. Give me 19, 20, and 21 because so I can finish this out. I can get up out of here. I got five minutes left. Verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, uh -huh. being a just man, yes. and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Yes. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him mm -hmm. in a dream. Saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her yes. is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. She shall bring forth a miracle. Something that is out of the natural. Something that man can't comprehend. Something that God alone, only God alone could have done. There is no way she should have given birth. There is no way she should have gotten pregnant. Because the verse earlier verse says, Joseph didn't even know her. So there's no possible way naturally. But read, tell me what happened. And thou shalt call his name, name. Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. That's enough. That's enough. Mary birthed a miracle. You all that are sitting here under my voice as I close, you have a miracle within you that needs to be birthed. When are you going to hit the spiritual labor room and let the angel of called midwife help you birth that child and push that baby out. Now, I've never been in the labor room. I've seen some videos, but I've never been in the labor room. But they tell me it's a horrible place to be at times. Yes, it is. It's a joyful place, but yet a horrible place. Yes, it is. And they call it a labor room because the mother labors. She actually laying there laboring, trying to get this baby out of her. And, and working in a hospital turn that thing on because I want to say something but I don't want it on camera 